This video is going to act as a summary for the videos that have already been in this playlist on TK Inter. I'm going to set a simple exercise that I'd like you to read and have a go at yourself and I'm then going to go through the solution in this video. So I'm going to go on to the exercise now, explain what I want you to do, ask you then to pause the video, have a go at doing it yourself, then come back to view the rest of the video where I will go through the solution to the exercise. This is the summary exercise and I'm asking you to produce a graphical user interface using Python and TKinter that has three buttons and a label. Arrange for the clicking of a button to set the background colour of the label to red, green and blue. That is, clicking one button changes the background of the label to red, clicking the second button changes it to green and clicking the third button changes it to blue. When the program first runs have the background of the label set at white, have nothing displayed in the label and have the text of the buttons display red, green and blue respectively. Of course when finished it's a pointless program but it is a useful exercise so just treat it as an exercise it's not something that you would find useful as a program obviously. Okay you may now want to pause the video and have a go at the exercise or watch the rest of the video and then have a go at writing the program. The first thing I would do when developing any graphical user interface is to do a quick sketch with a pencil and paper and I'm doing this here and you can see I would draw the graphical user interface window and I would draw the components as you can see I'm doing here so so far I've drawn the buttons and the label and of course the buttons need to be labeled with red green and blue as you can see here I would then draw dotted lines marked up with an event, a click event in this case, and I would show that executing appropriate code. And you can see I'm doing that for the red, the green and the blue buttons. Now of course the code that's going to be in these boxes here is something that's simply going to be responsible for changing the colour of this label to red, green and blue respectively. I would then think about how I would want to draw the widgets onto the window so I would split the window up into rows and columns as you can see here there's zero one two three columns so I'd label those as columns and down here I've got the rows and then I would put the label in this position and I'd put the buttons in the position shown here and of course if I just concentrate on the red button for a moment that's in row one column zero and of course all of the other widgets would be in a appropriate rows and columns. So I would use the grid method for drawing the graphical user interface. Let's now consider this computer program. It's not the full solution to the exercise, it's a part solution. I'll show the full solution on the next slide. But this is going to draw the graphical user interface. And we have these three lines which you should be well versed in what they do now from the previous videos. And here you can see I'm creating a label. And this label I'm giving a height and a width so it can be viewed on the form. And you can note that the exercise asks that the background of the label be white when it was first run the program and you can see here and put in BG is assigned white and here you can see I'm producing three buttons called button underscore one button underscore two and button underscore three and I have to say if this was a proper graphical user interface and not an exercise I'd be thinking of better names for these buttons but if you come and have a look at the options that I'm setting you can see I'm setting the options to red green and blue respectively and the width that I'm setting to six in all cases so we can have a reasonable size button displayed on the graphical user interface. Now these four lines of code are responsible for placing the widget onto the window. This one obviously is responsible for placing the label onto the window and you can see that's going in the first row and column one. These three are responsible for placing the buttons and you can see that they're all going to be in row one and they're all going to be in different columns. So if we now run this program the view of the graphical user interface we will get is as shown here and you can see that the the label is indeed in row 0 and it is in column 1 and if we look at the buttons you can see that they're all in row 1 and they're all in different columns so this one here the red one is in row 1 column 0 as dictated by this line of code and you can see here that says row 1 and column 0 and of course the green and the blue well you can look to the code here and button 2 which is the green button is in row 1 column 1 which you can clearly see it is here 
and if you look to button 3 which is the blue button you can see that that is in row 1 column 2 as it is here. I've taken the program we've just considered and I've added the following functions and if you look at the first function it says label underscore red and what this is going to do is going to have code within it i.e. this line which will change the background color of label 1 to red. This function is called label underscore green and if you have a look at the code within this you can see it's almost identical to the code for the function we've just been discussing. The difference is here I've got green so when this code executes we're going to have the label change to green and coming to here which is label underscore blue and if you look at the line of code here you can see it's almost identical to the code that was in the previous two functions just discussed but the difference is we're setting the background color as you can see to blue of course having these functions here does not mean they're going to execute just because they're at the top of the program they have to be invoked they have to be called so if we go and have a look at button underscore one this line of code you can see that we've added this other option where we say command is assigned label underscore red now this means that this will actually attach button one to this code so when we click on button one in the runtime what will occur is that this will say look this is the code I want you to execute and this name is the name of this function so the line of code to execute will be this and the label when button one is clicked will change to red. Likewise if we look at button 2 you can see here that the command is being made equal to label underscore green which means that button 2 will execute this function which changes the color of the label to green and if we have a look at this line you will see that what it will do it will have command being associated with label underscore blue which means that when it is clicked it will execute the code of this function. So to emphasize the point we can see that this function here is going to be associated with button 1 because of this line of text which I've taken from below and you can see that it's button underscore 1 is made equal to the button and if we look at the options here we can see that one of the options is command is assigned label underscore red which is the same name as this function here if I have a look at this function we can see it is associated with button 2 because of this line here and we can see the important bit is command equals and finally this function is going to be associated with button 3 because of this line of text where we've included command equals label underscore blue which is clearly the name of this function here we can see the program executing and if you have a look at the label you can see that it is white now of course it is white because when we executed this line of code you can see we set the option of the background color to be white now follow the cursor I'm going to click on to the red button and you can see that the label goes red now it's gone red simply because when I created the red button on this line this option was set to label underscore red which is the name of this function and this is the line of code that executed of course if I come up now if you follow the cursor to the green button and I click on that you can see that the background color has gone green because this is the function that's executed because of this bit of code here where it says command is equal to label underscore green and following the same logic if I now click on the blue button obviously this is the function that's going to execute and we've got command equals label underscore blue here and we're going to see that the label will change its background color to blue a question worth asking at the moment is what's this program doing well the answer is it's going around this event loop here it's waiting for me as the user to do something and I'm going to do something, I'm going to move the cursor, just, just watch the cursor. I come here to the red button and I'm going to click on it. And as soon as I click on it, Python says, oh, an event has occurred. What is that event? Oh, it's the event associated with this button, the red button that I've just clicked. So it looks at this code, so to speak. 
it sees that this is the command to be executed so it goes here it executes that command and what happens now well i'm doing nothing else so it's going around this event loop waiting for another event to happen so i'll come here now and i'll click on the green button and python says oh what's happened now a click event has happened it's associated with this green button i'll have a look at this code this is the command i need to execute so it executes that command which is this function here changes the label to green and goes back into this event loop and now it was waiting for me to do something so i'll just fire off a few events you can see i'm randomly changing the colors here and these are all events that i'm responsible for for firing as the user of this graphical user interface but in between me doing things python is going around this event loop here waiting for an event to happen check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on twitter as i issue a tweet every time i upload a new video